and these flat six Porsche 992 GT3 Cup cars will scream their way down to turn one. The lights come on, launch control is let off and away they go and it's a fantastic start from the front row of the grid. Dirk Schuten got a really good launch as well, he's looking around the outside of Dahan who sends it on the inside of Baguette, doesn't quite get the overlap though and I tell you what, the front Perais is absolutely gone. Glenn Van Perais is trying everything he can to run away, Schuten's made his way up to third position as a lot of jostling goes on further down the pack, it looked like Van Eindhoven was having a busy time trying to hang it around the outside there. Seems like we've got all runners and riders still shooting, having to defend straight away from De Haan. But he's making a great start of it. And look at that, De Haan already on the flashing lights, much like he was earlier on. I think Rick Cohn's in there as well. Sam De Jong has dropped a place or two. I think he's been overtaken by Flint Schuring. Everybody trying to keep it tidy through with the climbers who came for the first time. Half an hour's race underway then, and here they go streaking through the Sacrament Shell exception. As oh, around his car, 911 from near the back of the grid. That's Luke van der Feesten. That's down at turn one, that is as well. So he's taking his time getting going again. Out of the field, no chicane. And look at that, already De Haan now back in front of Dirk Schuten, so he's made that position back up into third place. Ahead of the bright yellow machine, he changes on our timing tower on the left. Perfect time here for Glenn Van Parijs to get ahead. He needs to finish ahead of De Haan to keep his championship hopes alive. He will have to have one hell of a meeting at the Red Bull Ring in a few weeks' time. But still, he's got to keep it alive. Oh, dear me, there's a big accident in the background. There was a car off, there's a wheel off as well. Didn't quite pick out who that was. I think it's one of the green machines. I think from in the middle of the pack it might have been Lucas van Eindhoven, but I cannot confirm that. There's a safety car already brought out instantly. There was a big, big hit into the barriers there. Hopefully the driver is okay. I didn't see that for third place. Quite literally shooting for the moon. But then got overtaken again by Robert De Haan. I think Robert made the move on the exit of the Kleiner chicane down towards the next two. Safety car breaking away from the field now then, and Glenn Van Parijs leading them around the final couple of corners, past the Jackie Itchbock, and then they will be across the line in just a moment's time. There is the safety car, I said it was going to go to the pit lane, but a sudden handbrake turn to the left-hand side, park it up, lovely job by the safety car driver. And what about the driver at the front of the pack? Is he going to be able to break away? Is there going to be a bit of teamwork here by the August by NGT team? I fear so. Glenn Van Parijs leads them across the line again with Bertrand Baguette in second place. Robert De Haan will not hang around here. We saw what he was like earlier off the restarts, but everyone making it a great, tidy start indeed. <laughs> what a noise as well. What a noise. It certainly gets the blood pumping. As down the inside there, lovely move by the look of it by the number 16 machine of Flint Schuring. He sends a move on Rick Cohen in the number 9 car. Does he make it work? No, he does not. As they go around the second right-hander. Oh, we've got a car off the road. That is Antonell, Quentin Antonell, car 56, off on the left-hand side of the circuit. But right now, that is of no concern to Glenn Van Parijs, who leads the way. There's some dust in the background there being kicked up even more. There's a side-by-side -side fight in the middle of the pack. And there is a five-second time penalty for Glenn Van Parijs for a false start. There was a battle going on with Aguirre to the back of the order, but that is of no concern now because Glenn Van Parijs needs to win this race by five seconds or more to take the race win. And there is another five-second penalty as well to car number 9-11, which is Luke van der Feesten. As there, down the inside goes Robert De Haan on Bertrand Baguette. There's a bit of contact. He hops and skips and jumps over the kerbs. That's a big old wobble. I think he actually avoided contact there. I jumped to the assumption that it was the contact that made the car bounce up in the air, but it got away with it. De Haan back again down the inside of Baguette. Still nothing doing. He's really feisty, isn't he? But look at the group behind. Shoots and Cohen, Shearing and Knutson, all waiting to take positions away from him at this moment in time, while Glenn Van Parijs has to build up this lead. You can see just holding on to that battle as well as Sam De Jong. He's managed to clear away a little bit from Etienne behind. Then it's Hans Weiss Junior, Cedric Chessang and Jaime Font in car number 93. As they swoop their way around turn two. Yeah, I mean, you can see from the body language of the car that he is pushing by mad now. It's like someone's put a 
rocket in the back of that thing. Considering that car didn't finish the earlier cooldown lap under its own pace, it's going mighty well at the front of the pack this time round. Bertrand Baguette holds on to second position. De Haan just behind us. Dirk shoots it all over the back of him. Dirk's footage from this one is going to be fantastic, isn't it? But Bertrand Baguette, nearly two seconds off the lead of his teammate now. Wondering whether he will play the team game here. He nearly played the ultimate team game earlier and gave our current race leader his car for this race. Look at the way they behave around there as they head out of the Villeneuve chicane, bounce their way around the curb and head into Turlum and Bot. Certainly do move around in such a fantastic fashion, these cars. It looks like Robert De Haan is actually the one under pressure now. Rather than attacking Bertrand Baguette, he's under pressure from Dirk Schutten and then Rick Cohn behind, waiting to pick up some of the pieces. Got the battle going on a bit further down there. I think that was Chassan trying to get past Vice, or was it Rosenberg actually in car number 12? It was. Just behind him was number 21. Sasha Norton across the line once again. Bongo Perez leads the race. What's the time as they cross the line this time? 1.6 seconds back to Bertrand Baguette. And suddenly, Robert De Haan, I think, has overdone it somewhere here because he's suddenly losing pace and he's run wide out of turn one and through goes Dirk Schutten. Is there an issue with Robert De Haan's car? Is this going to be a big upset here? Schutten's around the outside, so too is Rick Cohen. He's managed to make it work. He moves his way up into fourth position now. Suddenly, De Haan is having to defend like mad. Actually, has Cohen been sort of pushed out of the movie? Has Cohen has actually dropped behind the number 16 machine there of Flint Turing. There's Dirk shooting now. He's moved up into third position that quickly that the graphic hasn't kept up. Shooting gains another place. More battling going on there side by side as they go over the crest of the hill. That was the number three of Knutson side by side with Rick Cohen as they come side by side into the Villeneuve chicane. Dirk Schutten will not be checking his mirrors now. He'll be cracking on with whatever he can grab from this podium result. But as long as Glenn Van Parijs finishes in front of Robert De Haan, he'll be happy to carry on with this championship fight. Definitely an issue for Robert De Haan. This is not like him. Either that or he's just overdone the tyres trying to get past Bertrand Baguette. But he's now lost another position to Flint Turing. Flint gets past this time at the Bolderberg box. Which doesn't seem to have the turn in that he wants from this car. Rick Cohen's going to try and have a go again. Still 11 minutes of this race left now, and the gap at the front for Glenn Van Parijs goes up to 1.8 seconds. Now let's keep our eyes on Dirk Schutten. It's very easy to spot him from a distance, wondering whether he can have a go for second place and try and upset this 1 2 for August by MGT. Cohen's trying his best to upset championship leader Robert De Haan at the moment, isn't he? He's all over the back of him through turns one and two. Just seems like Robert mid-corner just can't carry the speed. Definitely look like the tyres have been done in somewhere there. That's the thing with these cars. They can be so sensitive sometimes you have to really keep them in a good window. Dirk Schutten is in a good window right now. He's got a decent gap behind him back to Flint Turing, so he's not going to be too worried about it at this moment in time. I'll just see that bright orange flash behind him, as if his own car wasn't that bright. I don't know exactly where he's going to be. It's a bit of an advantage in a way sometimes when your fellow competitors drive very brightly coloured cars, because out of your peripheral vision, you can see them a long way away. But it's Van Parijs, Baguette in second, shooting in third. Schuring in fourth place, and Robert De Haan, there's a car off there in that dust cloud somewhere, cannot identify who, and it's the number three machine of Robin Knutson that is off the road, that is at the chicane, down at the Vienna chicane, and it seems like there's another driver involved that wants to have a little word with him, and I was hoping that it wasn't going to be Rick Cohen, but it is, and the two of them very unhappy with one another, that's going to make Robert De Haan's life easier. No hands thrown in that one, but a brief exchanging of words, I imagine, that would not be broadcastable. But the Swedish driver, Robin Knutson, not very happy. And Rick Cohen, after getting a podium earlier on, certainly his look has changed. And I know that Dan Van Parijs, he won't know that incident's happened yet. He'll find out in a few corners, but he will be really, really hoping that there is no safety car there. though because it'll mean that he gets a free run behind the guys in front and there you go if you're a Dirk Shooting fan 
We'll be very happy to see that. Glenn Van Der Eyes would have come into the VLF chicane over that crest hill just there. Do you have to? Come on. Oh, he's sorry, he was 17th coming into this race weekend. As of the first race earlier on, he moved up to 14th in the championship with his 13 point score a little bit earlier on. So, are we all ready? We're going to get things back underway here at Zolder. Safety car, yep, backing up into its little parking space. Fantastic viewing point, that, on the inside. And here we go then, round the final corner yet again. Hopefully Glenn Van Rice hasn't just got himself another five-second penalty there for running away at the start, but he's disappeared over the horizon. He thinks, right, I need to get this five-second gap. I'm going to try and get it by turn one. Glenn Van Rice disappears up the road. We're going to get, I think, two laps or three laps out of this race because the timer will count down, then we'll get the plus one lap at the end. He's already got 1.6 seconds over the guys in second, third and fourth. So hopefully that's not got him in any more trouble than it's just Bertrand again. But it was a little bit slow away to try and help his teammate build that gap. Dirk shoots in third place. Fourth place at the moment is Flint Schuring. Fifth position, Robert De Haan at this moment in time. Thank you very much everybody that is giving me the wonderful comments in the YouTube stream. I do see you there. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Really enjoyed myself here. And hopefully these drivers are enjoying themselves. Dirk shooting on for a podium at this moment in time. Second place is the, going to be the result for him if this carries on. Look at the way that Glenn Van Parijs is throwing the car down the hill towards the field as she came. He is wringing the neck of this machine at the moment. Almost made me jump there seeing uh, Cohen's car off the side of the road. But obviously he's been there for a while. Dirk shooting, flashing through the forest in that bright yellow machine, looking very, very solid indeed. Robert De Haan has not been able to get back up with the pack, and I tell you what, he's actually under even more pressure here, he's dropped more places, and he's getting attacked from all angles here, he's got Chesang in there as well, and even Norton trying to gang up on him, so something is definitely wrong with the car at least. Robert De Haan. I'm not sure what he's overdone here, but he's getting overtaken left, right and centre, and that is perfect for Glenn Van Parijs, because that penalty could have dropped him into the pack right with Robert De Haan. This is the perfect time for it, really. There's never a perfect time for a penalty, but it's coming when his rival is having a difficult time with it as well. He's down to seventh place now, is Robert De Haan. Currently, technically, we're looking at Baguette winning the race, shooting in second place, and ensuring in third position. At the moment, Glenn Van Parijs would drop down into fourth position just ahead of Sam de Jong. And there he is again, flying towards us at the Kleiner chicane, hard onto the brakes. Fantastic shots there as these cars dance and wiggle their way into the corners. Norden has now got past De Haan and there's a move a little bit further down as well as I think it's Plonet going up into ninth position ahead of Jaime Font. 93, now he started this race in 19th position and has got up into the top 10. Fantastic drive so far. And here they come from stage right. Hard onto the brakes again. Glenn Van Parijs now has 2.1 seconds over the cars behind. It goes down a little bit in that middle sector there, but it naturally concertinas a little bit in the middle of the lap. So the gaps usually do go a little bit smaller down. smaller down, that's not great English is it, sorry, but look at this, in fourth position actually now, Flint Schoering is looking really, really close to the back of Dirk Schuten with one lap to go, here we go then, the final circulation here of the weekend at Zolder in the Porsche Carrera Cup Benelux, it's been great entertainment so far, and let's hope that that continues for the final lap, it certainly looks like it will do, oh something there, came off one of the cars across the start finish line, an official there holding out the board, I think to say the last lap board, and something came off somebody's car, there's a great scrap there going through the second corner, it's still De Haan clinging on for dear life to whatever positions he can hang on to, he's now in eighth position, still can't make it work though, something has gone very wrong for Robert De Haan in this race, in a race where he could have wrapped up the championship, he's had a bit of a nightmare competition this time round. There's Sasha Norton, confirmed as Pro-Am champion for 2023, celebrates by smacking it against the kerbs for a laugh over the crest of the hill, down towards the wheel of chicane once more. Everybody and look at the gaps because Glenn Van Parijs comes round the final 
corner to win on the road, but it's going to be a race victory for Bertrand Baguette. With the penalty applied, Dirk Schuten is going to be in second place. yellow machine of Dirk Schuten. Yes, there you go. Dirk Schuten in second. And <laughs> Dirk Schuten on the roof of his car. Very happy with that second position. As I imagine everyone in the chat will be as well over on the YouTube stream. It looks like he's certainly got a lot of fans and supporters in there.